Hi all, welcome back in this special series of system Verilog assertions. In the last video, we had a discussion about built-in system functions with respect to system Verilog assertions. Now in this video, I will be talking about the concept of SVA building blocks. So what are the steps involved in the creation of SVA system Verilog assertion checker. As you can see over here on the screen, we have some four steps involved in the creation of SVA checker. As you can see, creation of Boolean expression, then we have to create a sequence expression, then creation of a property and then we have to assert that property. We'll try to explore each one with the help of Git theory and then we will try to see the practical sample example with the sample waveform. As you know, in any design, any design model, the functionality is represented by the combination of multiple logical events. These events could be a simple Boolean expressions that get evaluated on the same clock edge or could be events that evaluate over a period of time involving multiple clock cycles. So system Verilog assertion SVA provides a keyword to represent these events called sequence. Uh, and the basic syntax for the sequence creation is as follows. So sequence, name of the sequence, in sequence inside that we can write the Boolean expression. Okay. A number of sequences can be combined logically or sequentially to create more complex sequences. An SVA provide a keyword to represent complex sequential behaviors called property. And the basic syntax for a property is as follows. Property keyword name of the property which is a user defined one we can give any name and property in between this property and end property we can define the test expression or complex sequence expression so now sequence and property both terms i hope cleared the property is the one that verified during a simulation it has to be asserted to take effect during a simulation. And SV provides a keyword called assert to check the property. And the basic syntax for assert property is assertion name, which is uh, not mandatory, optional one. Then assert property is a keyword. And within parenthesis, we can provide the property name. So remember, whenever we are defining the property, we must have to assert that property in order to take the effect during a simulation. And the syntax for that is assert. So whenever we are defining the property, we must have to assert that particular property. And remember, this assert is a keyword. Let me explain you the concept of a sequence and property with the help of this sample code and sample waveform. As you can see over here in the screen, I have written a very simple sequence and property definition and then we are asserting that property. Sequence S1 is a user defined name. In sequence, I am writing x variable over here, which is equivalent to x is equal to equal to 1 tick b1, meaning x is equal to equal to 1. In the property definition, property p1 and property, 
I'm writing at every passage of the clock S1 meaning this X so at every passage of the clock this X should be equal to 1 and then I'm asserting that property so by using assert keyword assert property within parenthesis the property and remember if we are defining a clock inside a property it is the best way to define the clock so that we can reuse the sequence with other clock as well now let me explain you with the help of the sample waveform as you can see over here what we want at every passage of the clock s1 meaning the x should be equal to 1 so as you can see over here this is what the passage of the clock okay let me mark the passage of the clocks so that we can easily understand the waveform as you can see over here the red triangle means assertion is failing why at this passage of the clock the value of x is 0 hence the assertion is failing now in the next passage of the clock till this 5 passage of the clock you can if you analyze you will find at every passage of the clock the value of x is 1 right hence the assertion is passing over here right in the next passage of the clock the value of x is 0 hence the assertion is failing over in the next passage of the clock the value of x is equal to 1 hence the assertion is passing and so you can analyze legs <coughs> now if we want to define the sequence with the logical relationship how we can define okay so sequence can be developed by using logical operations like or operator then and and xor let's try to understand with the help of sample code and sample code. in the sequence definition i have written x is equal to 1 or y is equal to so this means x and y both should be high at the same time or any one is high if both is high at the same time or any one is high then the assertion will pass when assertion will be failed whenever both x and y are low at the same time then assertion should be failed and here in the property definition at every passage of the clock we are writing this s1 sequence okay and then we are asserting the property p1 let's try to understand here in the waveform okay so if you analyze the waveform closely you will be able to understand how we are defining the sequence with a logical relationship and how the waveform is there for that okay. so let's try to understand over here assertion is passed failing over here at this passage of the clock why because the value of x and y both are zero over here so what i said before if both are low at the same time assertion should be failed hence here you will find the assertion is failing okay now in the next passage of the clock the value of x is zero whereas the value of y is equal to one so any one is high or both are high assertion should be passed here at the next passage of the clock value of x is 0 y is 1 hence the assertion is passed here in the next passage of the clock value of x is 1 and y is 1 both are 1 hence the assertion is passing and so on you can analyze later okay. <coughs> the next one is the AND operator in the sequence so if x and y both are high then assertion should pass if any one or both are low the assertion should be failed okay let's try to understand with the help of sample waveform in sample code so in the sequence definition s1 x and operator 
m percent m percent y in the property definition p1 i'm writing at every passage of the clock this s1 sequence and then we are asserting the property p okay let's try to understand with the help of this sample waveform okay let me mark the passage of the clock in the waveform so as you can see over here at this first passage of the clock assertion is failing why because x is 0 and y both are 0 right x and y both are 0 hence the assertion is failing in the next passage of the clock x is 0 and y is 1 hence the assertion is failing what we want both should be high okay if both are low or any one is low assertion should be fail i hope you are remember i hope you know the concept of and right you can apply that and you can understand in the next passage of the clock the value of x is 0 and the y is 1 hence the assertion is fail here in the next passage of the clock the value of x is 1 and y is 1 both are 1 means the assertion is passing over right and so you can analyze the wave the next is the XOR operator in the sequence definition so as you know the truth table for XOR if both the input are same whether both are 0 or both are 1 output should be 0 if both the inputs are different output should be 1 right let's try to understand that with the help of sequence with the help of sample code and sample waveform. So here you can see in the sequence x1, in the sequence s1, x, xor with y. Okay. So what it means, if both are same, the assertion should be fail, else the assertion is false. In the property definition at every passage of the clock, we are writing this as well. And then we are asserting the property even. Let's try to understand with the help of this sample waveform. Okay. So as you can see over here on the screen, both are zero right at this positive the clock, hence the assertion is failing. In the next passage of the clock, y is one and x is zero, hence the assertion is passing because both are not same. In the next passage of the clock, y is one, x is zero, hence the assertion is passing. In the next passage of the clock, both are same one one, hence the assertion is failing. Here in the next passage of the clock, y is 1, x is 0. Both are not same, hence the assertion is passing, and so on. You can analyze the data. Now, sequence with the arguments. Okay. So, inside a sequence, in the parenthesis, we can provide a formal arguments. Okay, let's try to understand how we can provide. So, let's say, for example, if you want to make the sequence reusable one or generic sequence we can use uh, formal arguments inside a sequence definition okay so as you can see over here sequence s1 in the parenthesis i'm providing variables x and y and then i'm performing a logical or operate operation in these two variables x and y okay. in sequence s1 so this formal arguments in a sequence definition we can define so the same sequence can be reused on other signals of a design that have a similar behavior as you can see over here in the sequence s2 i'm calling this uh, s1 sequence defining s1 sequence in the parenthesis i'm providing a and b as an argument so what will happen here in the sequence s2 the or operation will be performed on this arguments a and b now in the sequence s3 as we are providing the formal arguments c and d here the or operation will perform on this c and d variables so if you are defining the sequence with the arguments the sequence can be reused with other signals of a design data ever similar behavior let's see here if you want to define a sequence with a timing relationship how we can define 
as you know in the most of the scenario we may have to check the events that take a several clock cycles to complete okay let's consider if you want the x is high after two clock cycles the y should be high so that kind of you know uh, behavior we can define in sv with the help of this keyword or sign called hash hash so this highest highest sign or symbol represents a delay in sv so as you can see over here in the sample example sequence s1 main sequence i'm writing x followed by the hash hat symbol n then y so what this n n means uh, this n represents number of clock cycles so let's say for example if i'm defining hash hash 5 over there it means five clock cycle delays okay let's try to understand with the help of sample code and waveform okay. so here as you can see sequence s1 inside that i'm defining x followed by hash hash 2 and y variable and then in the property definition at every passage of the clock i'm writing this s1 okay. and then i'm asserting that property p what it means x is high after two clocks delay after two clock cycle delay y should be high then only assertion will pass if x itself is low then assertion should be fail and if x is high and after two clock cycle if y is not becoming high in that case also assertion should be fail let's try to understand with the help of this sample waveform over here. so as you can see over here at every passage of the clock so at this passage of the clock what we want x is high after two clock cycle y should be high but x itself is low hence the assertion is failing over here right in the next passage of the clock x is also zero assertion is passed failing over here let's try to understand the pass case so as you can see over here you will find the uh, green triangle okay which means assertion is passing let's try to understand that at this passage of the clock see over here we will try to see here the assertion is start here right here means the x is 1 okay this uh, remember this uh, blue square box uh, indicate the start of assertion so here assertion is starting at this passage of the clock the value of x is 1 after two clock cycle delay this clock cycle and after this clock cycle means two clock cycle delay the value of y you will find is 1 okay right here hence the assertion is passing after two clock cycle the value of y is 1 over here hence the assertion is passing right similarly in the next pa uh, pass condition will check okay here the assertion is starts here uh, you will find the value of x is 1 right And then after two clock cycle delay the value of y is 1 hence the assertion is passing and so on you can analyze so when the assertion is failing when the value of x itself is low the assertion should be fail and after let's say x is 1 then after two clock cycle if y is not becoming one, then the assertion should be fail okay so this is what the uh, you know simple explanation of uh, timing relationship in sva and the building blocks how we can define asva check so with this i hope you have understood the concept of basic sva building block what is uh, you know uh, property definition what is sequence definition how to define them what is boolean expression and if we are defining the property how we can assert that property okay and also i hope you enjoyed this video. so thanks for watching this video thank you